On September 27th, Azerbaijan launched a full-scale attack on the ethnic Armenians of Artsakh. The ancestral lands of the indigenous Armenian population were seized as part of a Moscow-backed truce. And as a result, over 100,000 refugees were left without homes. Most fled their ruined cities and villages with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Even though a ceasefire agreement was signed, crimes against humanity continued to be carried out on ethnic Armenians. Hundreds of Armenian soldiers remain unaccounted for, as well as dozens of civilians. While humanitarian organizations, such as the Red Cross, are active in the area, the government of Azerbaijan has refused to provide clear data, purposefully mudding the situation and rendering such organizations powerless. The agreement reached on November 10th outlined the need for the exchange of fallen soldiers and captured Armenians, both civilians and prisoners of war, to take place. But despite the agreement reached on November 10th, the violence is far from over. Since the very beginning of this invasion, Azerbaijani soldiers have been capturing, mutilating and beheading innocent Armenian civilians. These war crimes have been shared widely on social networks. Graphic footage of ethnic Armenians undergoing inhumane treatment at the hands of Azerbaijani soldiers has circulated worldwide, causing intense pain to an already traumatized global Armenian population. Dozens of videos emerge daily of Azerbaijani soldiers cutting off the noses and ears of innocent civilians, beheading restrained prisoners, many of whom are elderly men, and desecrating the corpses of fallen soldiers. These are routine practices of Azerbaijan whose president Ilham Aliyev repeatedly refers to Armenians as dogs and rewards murderers such as Ramil Savrov, an Azerbaijani citizen who beheaded an Armenian man at a peace conference in Hungary. Savrov was deported to Azerbaijan where he was immediately pardoned and greeted as a national hero. Now imagine for a moment that you've just sent your sons off to a war you did not start. A soldier like the majority of Armenian fallen was just 18 years old. He was killed in a drone strike and his body hasn't been sent back to you yet, despite it being over a month since the ceasefire agreement was signed. You haven't heard from your other son since October and now every time someone posts a graphic video on social media, you examine it closely, scrutinizing the voices, physiques and faces of the victims in a desperate attempt to locate your son. This is the reality that many Armenians are facing now. Examinations confirm that most of the recently emerging videos were not filmed or posted in October or November, meaning that the state-sanctioned violence against the captive Armenians is recent. Most disturbingly, the captors are unafraid to show their faces as they film themselves. They are proud of what they do. Some captors have even been identified as prominent members of the Azerbaijani community. They face no repercussions for their violent actions, and the world remains silent. But you can help. You can help. You can help. Write to your government representatives and urge them to press Azerbaijan to release Armenian captives. Share the work of journalists like Neil Hauer and Lindsay Snell who are documenting the action despite international apathy. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Make a stand. We believe that such acts of violence cannot go unpunished. We believe that this cannot go unrecognized. We believe in humanity. We believe in justice.